this is Mike. I hope you don't mind some noises in the background, but I'm in the shop right now. The dealership is closed, and um, this is our first Chrysler 300 on the that we've gotten in, and um, I wanted to do a video on it as soon as possible. And the weather is horrible out there. It's, it's like raining and sleeting and all that stuff, and it's freezing cold. But they cleaned it up and uh, they put it in here in the shop and I was like hey this is a good opportunity to show you off this awesome car so here I am in the shop it's a little bit noisy he's got some you know noises shop noises and stuff but um, but this is a very interesting looking car they did uh, change quite a few things on the uh, on the 300 this year and I think they did a really good job and I'm glad this is a white car because it really kind of shows you the contours of the vehicle pretty good so let's start checking it out now this one is very well equipped vehicle it's the 300 C and you can see here in the front is pretty awesome it's got a different look to it compared to last year it's got some LED fog lights here in the front and it has a by Xenon HID headlight here in the front and it's got some LEDs around the edges there which I'll show you the what the lights look like in a minute but there's the front I mean it they did a good job it's kind of a little bit like some of the older model uh, 300s but I think it just kind of looks better to me anyway and the 20 inch wheels it's like an aluminum but it's not too shiny it has a little bit of a shine a little bit of a luster but it's not too cheesy looking you can see what I'm talking about there and it has some nice faceting there to where you can get a little bit of a, a, a sparkle but um, but overall I think there's a really good choice of wheels for the white car it's got some chrome there on the, the wheel, um, the, the mirrors there. It also has some chrome handles. But let's go back up to the front because this one has your parking sensors. See those little round circles? Those are your parking sensors here in the front of the car. And uh, they also, here in the, that black section there, you see that little circle there? Those are your parking sensors and it kind of lets you know if you get close to something it'll kind of beep at you here in the front it also has them in the back which I'll show you but one of the cool things about this one it's equipped with the adaptive cruise control and right there is the little radar eye I guess you can call it it's like a little bubble kind of like what you would see maybe on a some kind of airplane or something so I'll show you kind of show you the controls on that but there's the front and um, I'm using you know my new camera and also my new cam camera stabilizer which uh, let's see here maybe you'll be able to see in this reflection there's a Samsung camera and this stabilizer I've got here that I made this is my second uh, and I think this is a really good stabilizer not just because I made it but it's a lot better than my old one um, this one has some you know has a little bit more weight to it and stuff so hopefully if you can give me some feedback on the um, the stability of this video I would appreciate it because I want to improve always so this one has the dual pane panoramic sunroof here at the top which really kind of helps with the back passengers from being claustrophobic let's go around here to the back and a little bit of lacking on light back here so hopefully we'll be able to see pretty good now you can see this one has little parking sensors like I said now the reason why the front this has more in the back not not any on the sides the front has on the side has them on the sides more because when you're rounding like when you're backing up 
and you're turning this way, it's um, it kind of helps with the uh, the front from hitting something, or you know, because your front wheels can turn, of course. So uh, you got a lot of different angles there that it can, you you know, that kind of warns you. So it does have the dual exhaust, bright tips here on the dual exhaust, and um, this one has the V6. You can get a V8, I believe. And let's go ahead and use the key here. I'm going to go ahead and just use the key because that's the way most people use. And I'm going to open up the trunk. You can also, I just want to show you that when you use the key, like when you're walking up to it, it opens up all the way. It doesn't just pop a little bit and then you have to reach over there and do it. It lifts up all the way and somebody's already got the net pocket here. But uh, you can go ahead and, you know, put your stuff in there. Let me get this net out of the way for the time being. Put it off here on the side. And let's kind of see what's under here. Uh, so this is similar to the Challenger in a way that you have your, in the Charger, that you have your, uh, your battery there and a spare tire. Alright, put that down. And the lighting's not too bad here in the trunk. It's got two light, two light sources. Um, it gets a little, little dark up in there, but not too bad. And it does have the, the little glow-in-the-dark thing, so in case a child were to get into the trunk, they can see that glow-in-the-dark thing and pull it, and they can get out. And also, I just wanted to show you, besides using the key to open it up, there's a little button here. As long as it's the, the proximity key is close by, I can push that button, and it'll open up as well. And don't get confused, because the backup camera see if I can show you the lights low and I'm really apologize for that um, let's see here backup camera is here and this and it'll, it'll kind of look kind of similar in the dark but this is the button and the backup camera uh, lens is here and I might have a remedy for the light with my little flashlight you can see there's the, the backup camera lens and then there on the right is your button button to open it up Alright, so you got your 300C badge there. And while we're back here, let me go ahead and push some buttons. Sometimes the camera gets shaky because I'm letting go on one side of the stabilizer. But, um, but let me just push some buttons on here to get some lights turning on so we can see what it looks like back here. It's like a glowing part around and then you've got some LEDs there in the center. And then your, your backup light there. Let's see what the front looks like while the lights are on. Okay, so the LEDs are not on, but the headlights are. But um, let's go ahead and find out what they look like while we're outside of the vehicle. Okay, now that the car is on, um, I just had to, you have to push the button twice to get the the run everything to come on so here's the front with the headlights on the fog lights and the turn signal here headlights are very bright and also you have a side marker here for the uh, the turn signal you do have a side marker there on the side, as well as on this side, front and back. And let's take a look in the back, see what this turn signal looks like. It's a whole series of LEDs there in the middle. And just want to show you that this does have remote start. And I'm going to just start it briefly since we're indoors. But uh, everything has to be locked. You have to push the lock button. Everything has to be secure. And um, so you just double tap this button right here. And there it goes. So uh, basically you can turn that horn off. 
in the settings if you don't want it to beep and wake up your neighbors early in the morning uh, with the remote start. But um, So there's that. So let's check the inside of the back. Now it's locked now and I've got the key in my right here in my hand and I'm just going to put it in my pocket and in order to get in the vehicle you can unlock it with the key of course but here's the door lock here you can put your hand here and it unlocks and um, so it senses your hand it senses the key in your close by and it unlocks the vehicle so that's how that works now to relock it you can push this button so that's how you do it and then just unlock it put your hand back here it unlocks so let's take a look here in the back now this kind of video is kind of going to be a day and night video because you know you get to see what it looks like at night time a little bit because it's low light so here's the inside of the back door and uh, you can see it has uh, some pockets here and there's your armrest there it does have some wood grain here it's really hard to see here in the back maybe you'll be able to see it in the front better the seats it's got the tan leather interior and there's some uh, perforations here let me see if I can get a close-up so you can see but it's all over the place here on the side and all there and then this is solid here on the side it's on the back as well and this armrest is folded down and um, so basically the armrest is also a little cubby hole and cup holders that can be pushed up if you if you need to do that and right here I'm gonna have to shine a flashlight on that because let me see because this is kind of important all right so right here you have your heated seat controls there and there you also have USB chargers down there you also have this button here and this button go ahead and push it um, it may not do it when the vehicle is not running but um, basically there's a shade that will extend up now I'll try to show you that when I get the vehicle on but it'll extend up and shade the back glass so it's good to have the controls for that in the back as well as the front because sometimes the people in the back want to use it and uh, you know they don't want to interfere with the people in the back and the front I mean now right here it's got this little this little light right here I guess it's just a light to illuminate the side of the vehicle but right above it is a little triangle that is a blind spot detector so if there's a vehicle there's actually a radar system in the side of this car so if there's a vehicle here in your blind spot like these barrels um, it'll kind of let you know by illuminating that little triangle and if you try to make a lane change like say by turning the turn signal on it will uh, kind of give you more uh, alerts there in the, in the center of the dash all right so we can see a little bit better here um, in the front this is the driver's side door and you've got a, a bottle holder a pocket there you've got a that's where the fuel cap release is in the door and in here just want to show you it is a capless design and it's flashlight time again capless design and this this is kind of like a rubber thing there to kind of keep stuff from going in now uh, it's not a big deal I think it's a it's a two-part thing right here actually you can't really put your finger through it it stops it, it has to be a certain diameter and if you need to use a gas can uh, there's a little funnel there in the trunk uh, that you can put in there and put in pour gas into the vehicle this one does have the uh, Alpine premium sound system and there's your automatic headlights your fog light controls and all that good stuff you do have two these little dials here uh, one is for um, like you're dimming on your dash but the other one is for the ambient light in the vehicle then you got a button here to release the trunk this one has a power adjustable tilt and telescoping steering column which is pretty neat you can get really fine tune it 
Uh, both these seats are power adjustable seats with lumbar support. And let's hop in. Oh yeah, very comfortable. One of the things about cars is, to me, they have to be comfortable. I mean, the seats, uh, if they're uncomfortable, I mean, I've driven uncomfortable vehicles for years and it's really hard on my back and stuff. So this is one of those, you know, get in it and it's like a recliner um, kind of feel to it. So you adjust the lumbar support and your back support and um, really awesome feeling vehicle. So let me go ahead and close the door. Get all those shop noises out. Just kind of soak it in. This is, you know, just where the, ve the vehicle's off now, and it's kind of telling me, you know, there's some illumination here, but it's kind of letting me know how to turn the vehicle on. And interior lights are still on. Now, to, tur to start it up, I would put my foot on the brake, and I would push this button. And that's only if the key is in my pocket. So I'm putting my foot on the brake, and it's reminding me, hey, you can, now you can push the button. Um, but this time I'm not going to start it since I'm indoors, like I said. I'm going to take my foot off the brake, push the button one time. That turns the ACC on, which is like the accessory mode. And um, so now we can kind of, you know, uh, check out some stuff here. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn on the into the the parking brake I mean parking lights on just so we can see that there's some illumin backlit and illumination here on the steering wheel and different places it's not quite dark enough to do a, uh, a at night video where it's you know really show you all the little lights in it but it, you kind of get a little bit of an idea just by kind of um, you know the way it looks now so let me turn on the interior lights so we can kind of see a little bit better so on this side, we've got your um, your Bluetooth phone, and you can you know send calls and receive calls here. You do have a voice recognition button here, and you can hang up if you want to hang up on somebody. And uh, on the right side is your cruise control. You just have to make sure that you turn it on by pushing this button here, and you'll have a little indicator there will show up. Right now, I'm not in run mode. Um, I'm in ACC. If you want to put it in run mode, you push this button again. Now it's in run mode. The vehicle's ready to go. It's just like turning the key all the way, but not starting it. That kind of thing. That's where we're at now. And uh, so, uh, basically, cruise control, make sure it's on. By pushing the button, it'll say cruise control ready. And then you can push the set negative or plus which is pretty cool some of them just have it yeah the negative but anyway this one you can do either one all right down here is the cool part of this you remember that little bubble radar thing i was telling you about this is the controls for that and you can turn it on by pushing this button this is you turning on the adaptive cruise control See right there, it says ACC ready. That's adapt adaptive cruise control ready. And uh, basically, when you're driving and you have the cruise control set, it will keep you at a certain distance from the vehicle in front of you just by using that radar. So let's say you're going 70 and somebody's going 68. It will slow down your speed to kind of match them so you don't have to constantly... Uh, reset your your cruise control and then if they go faster it'll go all the way back up to 70 if they get out of your lane then it'll go back up to 70 um, but basically it kind of keeps you matching the traffic and uh, it's a pretty handy feature I don't really have I don't have any personal experience with this feature but this is uh, the you know what I was told and how it's designed and now these buttons here once you have it on that's how that works now if you want to get closer or further apart from the car in front of you to kind of match. It will kind of adapt a little bit because of the speed. Um, if you're going real fast, then it's going to give you a little bit more room already. But you can kind of fine tune it here if you want. Uh, further apart or closer, closer in. 
So that's a pretty cool feature. So here on the uh, on the, on the gauges here, you see that it's got the uh, you know regular gauges there on the side. Then you've got this big old miles per hour there in the middle. And also it says at the top left of that it says 104 range. That's telling you that you can drive this car 104 miles before you have to get gas. On the top right, it's saying 39 degrees outside. And this little thing right here is the adaptive cruise control, which I turned on. I'm going to turn it off so you can see what it looks like when you turn it off. This thing is your lane departure warning. So the lane departure warning is um, like say you're just cruising along and you're not paying attention, you're playing around with the radio, you start swerving over and going over the line and you kind of swerving off the road or whatever, uh, it's going to kind of alert you that you're kind of not, you're not going, you're, you're going to run off the road or something like that. So you can turn that on or off right here, this button. But um, I think it's a good thing to leave it on. Unless the road is not marked properly, because it does use like a camera and also radar system there in the front in that little bubble. So if the road's not properly marked, then it may not work function properly. But, you know, it's just kind of an added safety feature on this vehicle. So these buttons here, where it says OK, and then you got the arrows, they go, there's like a whole menu system here. So see if I can hold the camera with one hand to show you and I'm going to use my other hand on these buttons so right now it's in the speedometer mode which is kind of the default mode but I'm going to scroll down and you see uh, the little menus the little number appears and now it says vehicle info like before it says speedometer which is number one so I go down to vehicle info and it starts off with uh, tire pressure now let me show you something. Go back up, go back down. Now you see these little bars here at the top. They tell me that I, there's more stuff. So I can scroll to the right and I can cycle through and get more information. And then it scrolls back to the tire pressure. I can scroll down. It goes into driver assist. And uh, that's the lane departure warning uh, system right there and uh, I haven't tried that out it's it looks pretty neat I don't know if it's going to maybe show you the you know where you are compared to the lines or whatever but uh, that's pretty interesting I'd like to kind of play around with that one day scrolling down fuel economy uh, you can get a average and also uh, the current fuel economy push to the right um, basically you got you can have two reset two of them, kind of like two trips. Scroll down and this is the actual trips. Now the trips covers your mile, miles, miles per gallon and time and you do have uh, two of them. One, two. Scrolling down again this is kind of tells you what your radio is doing but check out that cool I forget the name of that, that music symbol is pretty neat. Messages, no stored messages. Now the stored messages will be like, hey, it's time to change your oil. Or it could be, hey, uh, uh, you got a turn signal out. So stuff like that. It kind of gives you information if you need to know. And okay to enter screen setup. Now screen setup is if you want to change the stuff on the corners here um, to different information. And then it's back to speedometer. So there's some, you know, there's some stuff, useful stuff in there. It's not really a lot of stuff that you need to scroll around while you're driving, but I mean, you could maybe scroll down to uh, the fuel economy or whatever, just kind of out of curiosity. But um, you definitely want to familiarize yourself with the menu system in your garage, in your garage or in your driveway, because um, it's very tempting to play around with it while you're driving, and definitely want to be safe while you're driving. So <laughs> uh, don't want anybody to get an accident. So here on the steering wheel, it's got real wood here at the top. It's a real, it's real dark, kind of dark as far as lack of light, but also the the wood's kind of a dark grain here. Let me uh, do the flashlight trick just to kind of show you. It is a very dark, but you can see the wood grain in there. And then the outside here is uh, is a leather, 
with some stitching here on the inside. All right, so over here is your clock. It's an analog clock. Uh, you also have a 8.4 inch Uconnect. It's 8.4 uh, with the navigation. And this is a pretty neat system. I'm going to go and turn these lights off here because this has already got some light. So and that way there won't be a glare. So let's, let's see here. That's a good, uh, okay. Hopefully it won't shake too much because I'm trying to do it with one hand. Okay, so this is the system here, and it has icons here at the bottom, you can see. And it's similar to a computer in that you have icons, but it's right here, all of them at the bottom, you don't have to search for them. So it starts off with radio, which we're in that screen now, and you can, uh, it has AM, FM, and satellite radio. You have presets there at the top, you've got audio controls here. Uh, lots of cool stuff in there, but let's go to here to media and media is basically uh, this vehicle um, has the ability to play music through a Bluetooth device or USB auxiliary input or an SD card, which I'll show you those in a minute So there's lots of different connectivity options for the radio Controls this is where you go into the Heated seats, ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. Also, you can, um, it does have a screen off button there, which the previous models had the screen off button down here, but now it's here. So, um, you all, let's go back, go back there. Screen off, and then if you want it back on, you just tap that, it goes right back on. Sunshade, let's go ahead and push that, kind of watch that do its thing slowly raises up and that way the, the the sun is not on the back of your back passengers I don't know if you saw that or not let me go ahead and lower it all right so there's your controls there um, let me go back settings that's where you can turn the horn off if you don't want the horn beeping when you do the remote start that kind of stuff climate this is um, your climate control. It has a dual zone. You can have, you know, your driver can be, you know, one temperature. Your passenger could be another. You can also sync them if you want. Um, where you want the air to blow. You know what's going on there. Your fan speed. All that cool stuff. That's your climate. You can also turn the climate off if you want. Now navigation. It says obey all traffic and other laws. All right, I guess we'll accept that agreement. All right, so here's the navigation kind of default screen. You can just kind of view the map, which is right here, and you can you can zoom in and out. And um, but you can also put in a specific address, and you kind of start. You know, of course, I'm not in Canada. It would be nice if I was, even though it's kind of cold, but. Um, you start at the, uh, the the largest and work your way down to the specifics. And recent ones will be here. You can set your home address, all that good stuff. Phone. It's asking me to pair a phone. I don't want to pair one now. But once I do pair it, it's very easy to pair, by the way. You just go into settings, search for a device, hit pair. Very easy. Uh, maybe I'll make a video showing you how to pair phones because that's... Um, it's not that hard, but you know, you know, some people may think it is or whatever. But once you got it paired, you can uh, your your phone book will appear here. Recent calls, you can uh, dial on a keypad. Um, you can redial. You have some favorites there at the top. I'm trying to get on my screen, it just kind of looks a little dark to me. So uh, hopefully, I'll be able to see the pre see like at the very top the presets. All right, right here, um, there's the presets, but all right after that is your, uh, you, if you, the transfer button. So basically, anytime you're in a call, you can hit the transfer button and transfer the call back to 
your cell phone. So like you call you call somebody or you, they call you and they start talking about personal stuff and you got some people in the car and you just kind of want to, you know, let's transfer that back to the cell phone. That's that'll be good. And then that way you can carry on with your conversation. You don't have to end the call. You know, you can kind of like say, "Well, hold on a second, push the button and then you're in a, you know, private more of a more of a private conversation anyway." All right, so the Uconnect apps are here. You do have to register for some of them. But one of the cool things uh, about the apps is, um, well, let me show you. Uh, where it says via mobile, that actually uses uh, mobile data off your cell phone. So just want to be aware of that. Um, Travel Link, one of my favorite apps here. Um, the reason why it's favorite is because it uses the navigation and the satellite radio. Now I'm inside of a building, so let's see if it works. The fuel prices you'll have um yeah it's working so you can sort you have like basically different gas stations here and you can sort it by brand you can sort it by distance you can sort it by price okay so if you want to drive you know two miles to save a few pennies there and you um you could do that and uh so this is up to shows the day it's updated now let's say you want to go there so you click that you can call them and you can say hey do you got you know clean bathrooms or whatever you can also hit go now and it'll take you uh, to the navigation screen let's see if it works while I'm in the building here all the right route is being calculated so it's, it's it's calculating the route and all I'd have to do is hit yes and I'm going there okay so um, so that's a pretty cool feature that the, the whole travel link thing with the fuel prices it also has some weather weather information you can see it looks pretty gloomy out today five day it looks supposed to be nice this weekend but um you also have a weather map over here and and uh center car on map so you can see let's go here to 300 miles you can see it's pretty messy where I'm at right now with all the the storms or whatever but um but yeah I mean it, you, you know I've got this information here to where you can kind of you know plan your your day or plan your trip or whatever while you're driving so anyway that's your the you know hitting some high points there on the the Uconnect 8.4 screen it's kind of like a computer radio slash entertainment slash all kinds of stuff there but let's move down here let me turn the lights back on alright so this is your volume and by the way I totally forgot to show you it does have a volume on the back of the steering wheel um, right here I don't want to turn the volume up too much but um, it has a volume button like so when your hands right here it's right there these fingers back here can uh, easily kind of feel around and feel that volume you can also change to the stations on this side so I'm just kind of scroll through the stations there we'll go back to the 80s and um, you also have a volume here you have a tune through the stations here which is kind of interesting that it's you know opposite but anyway that's um, that's the way it is and there's a traction, traction control button and you can turn that off if you want to default is on it's automatically on unless you turn it off now if I push the button it's gonna hey, say hey traction control is off you're in kind of like a sport mode now so that's if you want to kind of spin tires or whatever now it's also useful if you get stuck in the snow or something like that and you kind of need to you know kind of spin tires a little bit um, you know basically that's a uh, you know that's you know a, kind of a more practical reason to use that uh, the okay this right here I'm going to show you the lane departure warning right here Let's see if it'll focus it's right there you could turn that off if you want this right here is a crash mitigation system so you can turn that off if you want but if you're going really fast or if you're going forward and there's a car in front of you or there's something in front of you that the car detects that you're actually going to crash just like it's depicted in this little graphic here then it's going to literally slap on the brakes for you and try to stop you or 
maybe not stop you completely, but at least slow you down as much as possible to mitigate the crash. And that's why it's called crash mitigation and uh, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, lots and lots of features in this car. But down here uh, is some redundant buttons for your climate control, your fan speed, uh, your, your temperature controls, and all that good stuff there. This little thing opens up, and you've got like a little pocket here. It goes in pretty far. You can see a slight illumination. Let's see here. Just a little bit of illumination there. It is felt lined, and um, to where you can put some stuff in there. But, uh, and there's a power supply here to the right. This is your shifter, which, uh, <laughs> pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, can't do it, let's go. I'm going to go ahead and start the car for a second, because i got to show you this. Reverse. There's the backup camera. And then, um, basically, it's very bright. Um, there's some bright lights back there, but also, uh, the, the camera kind of adjusts for different lighting conditions. And also, you'll notice... It has a uh, showing you that your your parking sensors are active in the front and back, and kind of gives you an idea of where they're they're aiming. And also, if you were to get close to something, it'll start beeping, um, and also kind of get flashlights in the direction that you're, there's something in the way. So there's that. Go ahead and put it back in park and turn it off there. Okay. All right. So. Anyways, um, the, sh the shifter there is a rotary shifter because this has an 8-speed transmission and uh, it's just an electronic shifter. Now, the 8-speed, one thing a lot of people don't know is it doesn't have to go through all 8 gears. It can just skip gears. Uh, it just has 8 gear ratios available for the, for the car to use. This right here is kind of a little bit of a shallow pocket there. Um, I guess, you know, it's good for your cell phone or something. I get it. It's pretty much just for your cell phone, I guess. But um, you know, you could put stuff in there, and you can see you've got some cup holder illumination here. But there's your cup holders, and this, you know, this closes here if you want to cover that up. And it's kind of like a. Pretty sure this is a, a fake wood grain. I don't, I'm not sure if this is real wood here or not. Um, maybe maybe somebody knows if this is real wood in this car. Some cars do have real wood. Um, I'm not sure if this one does. This doesn't look like it. There's your armrest. And this um, this lifts up, basically. And uh, you've got a little tray here. Man, I wish I had more light. Anyways, there's a little tray right here that comes out. And, uh, and underneath the tray, in this little storage place, is, I'm gonna, just going to have to use my, my flashlight, is your auxiliary USB and SD card inputs right there. And there's the tray there, and, uh, and then there's a power supply at the bottom. Now, I was hoping that there would be some kind of illumination in here, but apparently not. So let me go ahead and put the tray back in. All right, glove compartment. It is a compartmentalized type system there. It's got like some shelves there at the top, and then you've got a nice big felt lined area at the bottom. Everything feels high quality. Um, the, the, the dashboard is kind of like a soft rubbery feel most everything's soft to the touch um, you know of course this wood is not and this is hard plastic and the knob is kind of hard plastic but it's a it's a quality feeling vehicle it's very comfortable it has a, quite a few features and the drive is the biggest thing you got to test drive one of these all right so moving up here there's the rear view mirror now this one has on the back side of the rear view mirror is for one thing this is a this is an auto dim rear view mirror. If somebody's behind you with their headlights bright, it'll dim this mirror so it's not blinding you. In addition to that, on the other side of the coin, on the other side of the windshield as well, 
uh, it has a light sensor to where if you are driving and somebody's coming towards you, it will sense their headlights and dim your headlights to where you don't blind them. So uh, it doesn't like to blind people. So that kind of helps out. Right here, it had a, has an, a button that says assist and 911. The assist button is for like roadside assistance and stuff like that. It'll actually call an operator. And you can register Uconnect by pushing that button. 911. This vehicle does have a the ability to call without call 911 without a cell phone. Like if you don't have a cell phone in the car, you don't even have a phone paired, you push that button, it has its own cellular connection and it will call 911 for you. Now, if you push it, it will give you the option to uh like if you were to accidentally push it, it will give you the option down here on the screen to cancel that call. I think it's like a 10 second delay. Here is a place to put your sunglasses in here. And these are the tap lights, like I showed you. And let's see if I can show you here. It has garage door. Hold on. Flashlight time. Let me see here. Yeah, okay, they're illuminated, backlit. Just turn the light on, the headlights, the parking lights. So you got these buttons here illuminated, and you've got this little dim light here, and uh, at nighttime it does cast a pretty good amount of light here, and you know, just kind of so you can see what you're doing. So that's uh, when it's really dark. These three buttons, one, two, three, those are for your garage door controls, and these are for your huge panoramic sunroof. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the shade. And open up all the way and I'm kind of holding the camera down so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about it's got a really huge sunroof basically for the front and rear pack passengers it's a dual pane sunroof so basically you can open it up all the way like so and then stop it and go back forward You can also bend it like that. Close that. Or you can, you know, cover it up with the shade there. All right, let's take a look under the hood. I'm gonna turn all these lights off. Let me turn this off. So, another thing I forgot to mention, it does have these buttons here for your automatic to kind of automatically adjust your seat and your steering wheel and it has two presets all right so let's open the hood which is right here right next to the parking brake and just to the right of the center of the front of the vehicle, just here on the bottom, is a little lever. You just grab it, pull it over, and lift up slightly, and the, the whole hood will lift right up. So this one has the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 with the VVT system. If you don't know what that is, just look up my video called What is VVT? And Matt, the engineer student, will explain it to you better than I can. So here's under the hood. You got the purple antifreeze there. And it's kind of covered up. One thing I learned today, which I did not know this, and um, I don't know if you care or not, but this right here is the oil filter. It's right here on the top center of the vehicle, the engine, I mean. Um, that's the oil filter. It's like a canister inside of this filter, but there's the that's how you access it right there. I mean, you, before other engines, you would have, actually have to get underneath the vehicle and reach in there and unscrew it and all that stuff. This is uh, very, very easy to get to the oil filter. All right, there you have it. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know. 
And uh, I think they did a good job on the styling of this car. It's, this one's a C. It's got lots of features. And the ride is awesome. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any experience with this vehicle, like real world, driving on a trip or anything like that, please share it in the comments. I'm sure everybody would like to, to know about it. And if you're planning on buying one of these, um, you know, if you, once you get one, kind of share your, your, your opinion on it. Or if you've test driven one, all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you could, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with your friends and all that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. See you next time.